Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. Yesterday I made a short on milling a cross pin for a 488 with 456 or 488 gears. And that's so you can install the pin once you, once you put your axles in. It kept me up at night though, because it's the way I did it was the way everyone does it. But it still stresses me out because you're taking a factory axle that has these notches in it. And in your bolt hole is on the same plane as those notches. What these notches do is it allows oil in between the spider gear and the pin. Um, that's all those do. That's why they're pretty crudely put in there. It stresses me out though, because when you mill them to get them in, you have to mill them on this side because you can't mill it on this side because the axle runs there. That's what keeps the axle in tight. That's what those little marks are right there. So you end up having to mill it on this side, which then leaves just tiny landings on either side of your mill, new milled this way, and then you have a tiny landing there and a tiny landing there that's holding your spider gear. Um, and that's probably going to wear fairly quickly. I, I can only imagine. Um, these pins wear anyway. Um, I can only imagine if you're removing half of it, that it's, it's gonna wear even extra fast. So I came up with a new idea, and that's this pin. So this pin, I did machine on the same side as the flats. Then I milled in, and drill the new hole. So now our oil holes are 90 degrees from there they originally ran. Not a big deal. Um, that, that, that isn't going to cause any issues whatsoever. And I still retain the entire sides minus just a tiny bit for that, that uh, spider gear to run on. So I think this is a much better way of doing it. The problem with doing it this way is a lot of guys will just grab this in a vise and grind off a side. Um, it's going to be impossible for you to drill this hole uh, straight. You'll end up having an oversized hole just so you can get the bolt in. Um, and it, it will be probably pretty disastrous. And it's really hard. The material is really hard. So here's how I did it um, on a lathe. And if you have a milling machine, it'll even be easier basically doing the exact same thing. So check this out. Um, I think this is going to be a superior pin to basically any other pin on the market. It's just taking a factory pin in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to assume you know how to, to square your tool holder to your chuck. What I did right there was make a flat spot to drill our hole. Uh, and then I'm gonna flip it 180 utilizing the flats, the oil flats on the pin already. So what I did right, what I'm doing right here is I'm putting in a quarter inch drill bit and I'm just gonna use it as a reference so that I can zero out my digital readout um, because we need to go in 350 thousandths um, from the edge to the center. And then that will make the hole 100 thousandths in from the end of the pin, which is where the factory hole is. As you would expect, these pins are very hard. Uh, so making those flats helps a lot because they are actually heat treated. So they're really only hard on the outside. Once you get into the middle of the pin, they're pretty soft. So we just tested out my layout. I had to flip my pin um, and go at it from the other side so I didn't ruin my drill bit on punching through and use our centering bit to finish the hole. Um, and it worked out perfectly. So now uh, this, this isn't super critical. 
to get this perfectly level, but um, I just basically eyeballed it. I just put the drill bit through in the hole and then turned the hole or turned it and made it level. And now we're just making our making our first cut. I'm going to take two passes at it uh, for a total of 75 thousandths. That's bow lube I just put on there. And I should probably mention, so this is actually just a four carbide fly cutter that is meant for a milling machine and I just chuck it up into my lathe. So this is the first time I've actually used it um, and I'm very, very happy with it. I'll put a link in the description below for this thing. And now this is the second pass and we are going for a total of 75 thousandths and that will clear the 456 pier uh, if you're going 488s. Um, I've been told that you have to go 125 thousandths but uh, I haven't actually confirmed that. Our new hole. So this hole, we may want to put maybe a roll pin in and file it off, just so someone doesn't accidentally put it in that way. But if you're doing it yourself, uh, I, I don't think you'll be so stupid because that would be, if you used that hole, that would be on your axle side, and your axle would just be slopping in and out. So it's pretty dummy proof, but not 100% dummy proof. Okay, so now you got your carrier here. This is an LSD from an Explorer, um, and then you can rebuild them. And if you really want to get fancy, use the spring and clutches from a Cobra R, um, and it will be a real tight posse. Um, and for fairly cheap, because these are in about 50% of the Explorers or better. Um, so anyway, so once you have your big, thick 456 or 488 gear, you'll put this in machine side down, and then you'll have enough space um, if you're 488, you have to come, you have to go off farther. Um, 125 thousandths is how deep you'll make that. That's 75. Um, so you'll put the original bolt hole in first with the machine side down. You'll put it in to about there and then turn it 90 and then push it in the rest of the way. I must have a burr on that thing still. And then install your bolt. Tighten it up, and now your machine side is facing you or away from you, and then the axles will be hitting on the round spot just like they're supposed to. You still have your oil passages, they're just on the sides now instead of on the top and bottom, which I don't think will hurt a thing. I did not leave a lot to spare, but it fits. <clears throat> And then once you get it in there, you got to turn it 90 and then put it in the rest of the way. Put your bolt in. The Twin Turbo Crown Vic is going to be running this Saturday, so tomorrow, um, if you're watching this video while well, it's new. Um, and I will be testing out the very first pin I made, the one that is keeping me up at night. So um, once I get back, I'll take that out and we'll do a follow up on it and see if that thing wore out or if uh, it looks like it would have been good for a while. And then we'll put in our new pin and I'll run that for peace of mind.